Hey, did you know you could use your inkjet printer to print on these to make custom decoupage designs? Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name is Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on how to make and create more economically and ecologically. And I recently learned a new technique that I want to share with you today. So for this technique, you only need a few items. You obviously need your printer, and I believe either an inkjet, I have an inkjet, and I believe a laser printer would work as well. You need an iron, some printer paper, a pair of scissors, some scotch tape, and then you need your napkins. You can use the, obviously you can use the printed part of the napkin as well. If you have printed pre-printed napkins, with a design on them, you need to make sure that you have a three ply napkin just because the second ply will have a little bit of ink on it and you don't want that. You want a completely clean napkin. I'm pretty sure these are just two ply. We'll find out in a minute. And the only other napkins I was able to find were these plain white ones, but obviously they will work as well. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but my white napkins have sort of a seashell print on them and I first I tried to work really hard to iron that out I wasn't able to get rid of the print or rid of the uh, embossing so for the pro the few projects that I've worked on that has not been a problem if you are overly concerned about that you want to check your um, napkins and try to find a smoother uh, Stop, smoother design I would say. So because I have just solid white napkins I'm gonna go ahead and iron all three plies at one time. If you have printed napkins you might want to take them apart first. I don't know if the iron will press the ink into the third layer or not. You could probably test that out. But I have found that uh, by ironing all the layers together it becomes easier to separate them because they are a little hard to get started as far as the corners go. So I'm using my iron on the hottest setting and mostly I'm just concentrating on trying to get the folded creases out of it. Like I said, I wasn't able to get any of the seashell print out of it at all but it didn't really disrupt the designs that I used at least. So like I said, I think once you do the decoupage on it, it sort of washes that out and the print kind of disguises it as well. So you can work on this. You need a hard surface to iron on. I am lucky to have a marble top table so I don't have to worry about protecting the surface at all. But um, you do want kind of a hard surface to iron on. So once you've ironed it, it does sort of separate on its own a little bit and you can pull the layers apart. I guess I should back up here a little bit. I find it easier to cut all the layers together. So before I separate them entirely, I'm going to just take one of my pieces of printer paper. I just kind of go dead center of my napkin so I'm getting the flattest part and you want to cut your napkins. You can either cut them the exact size of your printer paper and then tape around the edges. I find it easier to get my napkin smooth if I cut the napkin smaller than the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and mark a few lines on here and then cut out all three layers of my napkin at one time. So I just traced around two sides and then I'm going to adjust it so that when I cut it, it will be about three quarters of an inch smaller. And as I mentioned, at least with these napkins, once they're uh, pressed and ironed, the layers just kind of fall apart basically. So they're quite easy to get apart. So now I have three pieces ready to be taped to a piece of printer paper. 
And to do that, like I said, I like to have, I don't like to wrap my tape around the edge of the paper. I just want to lay it flat. And I'm kind of gently stretching the napkin, but very, very gently. You want it to be smooth and you want it to not buckle up when you go through the printer. So if you've ever stretched a canvas onto a frame, you, you kind of know what I mean. Obviously you're not gonna pull on it very hard, but you wanna make sure that it's laying smoothly. And you can figure out kind of what works best for your printer. I usually just tape across the top edge and a little bit down the, top, the uh, sides, but the bottom, I let kind of just, um, I leave looser just so that it can kind of move a little bit and smooth out as it goes. You might find that you want to tape the entire, you know, the whole thing or um, not tape the as much as I do, but I think you want to have the entire top edge sealed down so that it'll pull through your printer properly. So I don't know if you can see that, but like I said, I just do the top edge, the sides, and I, you want to make sure that you have it stretched out a little bit to the bottom so that it doesn't pucker up too much. And you may have a few misprints, but you'll, you'll get to a place where you kind of know how best to tape the napkins for your printer. This napkin isn't coming apart quite as easily as my other one. So it might depend on the design, but it is only a two-ply napkin, and you might not be able to see this, but there is definitely sort of an ink impression on this under layer, so you do want the third layer if you have printed napkins. But you can also use this portion, obviously, for your decoupage projects as well. So I have a couple of pieces of artwork that I'm going to print here and I have Adobe Illustrator but I know there are a lot of other photo editing and graphic art programs out there. I've heard a lot of good things about Canva. Uh, I don't know, there are probably free options for you to use as well but I'm just going to quickly print out a couple of designs that I have here um, on my screen. So I have this little celebrate pattern here and I'm just going to go ahead and print that. Hey, if you're enjoying today's video, please be sure to click that like button. Also, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and check the bell icon so that you're notified when I upload new videos. So these are my examples of the custom printing that I've done with, on my printer and I do want to mention a couple of things. Uh, I would not recommend using a high-end printer or a finicky printer because I did end up with a couple of paper jams in my printer and I had to stop and clean it out. So if you are going to try this just be warned that uh, you might have a little bit of a problem with your printer. The other thing is that I have not had any problem when I uh, decoupage the black art, but on the colored pieces, uh, particularly the red color, has been bleeding. So um, I did apply some finish to the colored art, and I'm just, I haven't used a lot of sp uh, spray sealers. This one was recommended by another YouTuber, so I just grabbed it at the store. There are a couple of different ways to prepare the napkin pieces for decoupage. You can either cut them out or tear them out. And I've also seen people use a water method where they just use a really fine brush and kind of put a water line around and then tear on that water line. I wasn't very happy with that um, process just because I felt like the water was bleeding too far. Maybe I was using too much water, I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna cut out the first little cat here and then I'm gonna hand tear the other one. 
The one thing I will say is that it is much easier to cut the napkin if you keep the printer paper backing on it and you don't really have to have it taped uh, on you just need to kind of hold it in place while you're cutting out your shape depending on how intricate your shape is but just having that paper on the back makes it much easier to cut it just kind of supports it and I found that it is a lot lot easier to cut out the shape that way so then once the shape is cut out you can go ahead and just get rid of that backing piece and like I said for this one I'm just more comfortable kind of hand tearing the extra napkin off around the edges rather than getting the napkin wet first but you can certainly try it and see if you like that method um, this is an interesting observation that sealant is coming off on my hands like I said I haven't used a lot of spray sealers so I don't really know what to expect So I'm just going to leave kind of a rough edge around this to hopefully kind of blend in with whatever I'm decoupaging onto. And then I'm just going to quickly uh, decoupage these two. I'm going to use the Mod Podge gloss and matte finish just to see if the sealant worked on this red portion of the cats. I'm hoping it won't bleed anymore. And if uh, you're interested in finding out more about Mod Podge, I did an entire uh, video comparing that Mod Podge to homemade. And I'll put a link to that in the comment section. Whoops, I tore a little too much. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe I have too much sealant on. If you have any tips for how to use sealant, go ahead and give, them, give me some notes in the comments. So you can see here these two uh, kitties that I've just put on this little test piece of cardboard. The red is quite vivid if you can see that but it has bled uh, when I put the Mod Podge on there. So I am not an expert <laughs> at decoupage by any means but I'm going to go ahead and use the glossy and the matte on these two kitties and see if I get a better result. If you're interested in using any of my artwork, please check the description box and visit my blog post for the printable versions of all of the artwork I used here. I didn't have much luck with the red, so if you have any tips for how to keep that uh, red from bleeding when you print with an inkjet printer, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I didn't have nearly as much problem with the other colors. Now I'm assuming that they would bleed a little bit, but uh, here's just part of a flower or picture that I decoupaged onto this cardboard as well. And it doesn't have any of the same bleeding problems. So I think it's primarily the red that is problematic, but certainly um, if you want to use colored designs, this is not going to be the best solution for you. I'm not sure why this is, but for some reason the black does not have that same bleeding problem. So I used quite a few different designs. This particular one I just tore out the shapes and added them using the matte finish Mod Podge to a couple of scraps of 2x4 just to make a fun little New Year's decoration. If you saw my Christmas video, you already saw my uh, bottles. These bottles were painted and then uh, Mod Podged with just white the white napkin paper. And so they're a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of texture to them, but I liked the way that the lettering turned out. You can't see any edges on the paper and it's got a little bit of texture to it, like I said, but uh, I used the gloss finish on this one. And then here's my silly pencil can.
that I also used the gloss finish on and I didn't have any bleeding issues with the black at all. So um, I'm hoping that I can figure out a way to seal the colored versions because this is a very fun technique to use to make your own designs for decoupage. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my Mod Podge versus homemade video and I hope to see you back here soon in the lab. Bye.